Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this tutorial, we're going to be making a system that allows us to easily plug and play animation curves into our buttons to have some sweet effects happen with almost zero code. So let's close this, roll the intro, and let's get right into it. So how this is all going to work is we're going to have a parent object that is going to have all of our code inside of it. And then our child objects, which will be our play button or a quit button, they're going to inherit this particular object so that all of the events come with the parent object and we don't have to do anything. So the very first thing we wanna do is let's create a object and I will call it object button parent. And we need a variable definition because we wanna be able to change this on the fly. The first variable that we're going to be using is curve underscore in. I'm going to make sure that it is set to assets. And then I'm going to say that we can only use animation curves and then set the default to none. The next thing I want to do is add a couple events. We need a create. We need a step event, mouse in, and then mouse leave. In the create event, we need to store a couple of different variables. We need to figure out or we need to store variables that tell us information about the curve, specifically the curve that we are currently on, and we're going to set that to no one. And now we need to store some information about the channels that come with animation curves. If we create our first animation curve, I'll just call this curve sample. And in here, you can see that right here we have our curve number one. We can add curves to this or we could delete them or toggle them on and off. We are also able to double click and change the curve name itself. And this is what we will refer to as the channel. So for this particular example, I'm going to use the scale value, let's say scale X. And now this curve is what we are going to be using to scale our X position. Now, if I click this button, you can see that the upper range is one, and the lower range is negative one. If I change this, the ranges will change on the fly. However, for scaling, I'm just gonna keep it at one and negative one. Now, I want our button on the X scale to kind of go a little bit bigger. So I'll put that right there, and then it will slowly decrease to the original size. Now, I don't like the linear approach, which is just this straight line. So I'll click here and say that it is a smooth line. So over time, it will be nice and easy. Now, the way that the animation curve works is along this line, it represents a value from zero all the way going to one. And you can see that is if we pull this down, you can see that the H value goes from zero to one and the V for vertical obviously will go from zero to whatever the maximum amount is. So we need some information to store saying that we are going to be using this X scale based off of this curve. Let's create a couple variables in our create event to do so. So right here, we have a channel X, a channel Y. We have our scale, scale X and scale Y. Now these are all going to be separate channels that we can find within our curve. Now I've set them to negative one because these should be structures. And by default, if we don't have it inside of our curve, say for instance, this is only scale X, this will return a negative one value. So we are able to determine whether or not this is actually within that curve itself. The next thing I wanna do is, is I wanna store the original position and the original scale of the button that we're on. For the code found here, we're storing the original X and Y values. We are choosing the original scale for which is just the X scale and also the scale X and Y for the image. We need to store the original values in case we're moving say the Y position or the X position because if we look at the curve, our curve down here is starting at position zero and we don't want the X or Y position to start at zero. So we need to store that original value so that we can either add or minus values from that. Going back to our parent button, the next thing we want to do is on mouse enter. We need to make sure that we are actually passing in a curve. So let's do that with an if statement. And once we know that we have passed in an actual curve, we need to get the information found within our animation curve. To do that, we can use the new functions that come with GameMaker 2.3 called animCurve underscore, and then we have get or get channel and then we will finally use the evaluate channel in the end. 
So let's go ahead and get the information about the curve in all of the channels. So you can see here, if I pull this over, we are getting the actual curve itself. And this is the variable that we are going to pass in. Then we are checking for a X channel, a Y channel scale, which is, we will be using for both X and Y image scales, and then only X scale and Y scale. So what these values represent is in the animation curve, whatever we name this specific item here, the channel, we're going to be looking for that channel within our code. Now, the last couple things we need to do is we need to be able to tell our curve that it can move up and down. So back in the create event, let's create two more variables. We'll say move curve equals fault, and then a curve value equals zero. Remember on the curve going left to right, it starts at zero and then makes its way across the curve until it hits a value of one. And that's when we know it is complete. So in the button parent, when our mouse enters, as long as we're passing in a curve, we can tell that, that we can move along the curve. And then we might as well set the value of our curve back to zero so it will restart. Now what we have to do is we have to go to the step event and check to see if we are able to move the curve. So we can say if move curve, then we can fall into this code here. Obviously we need our curve value to start at zero and go all the way to one. So we can get away with using a lerp function just by using the curve value, setting it to lerp and setting the current amount to one. And then over time, we will reach our destination of 1% or 100% for that curve. We also need to check if our curve is at the end. So we can do that with an if statement saying that if the curve is bigger or equal to one, then all we want to do is stop the motion of the curve itself. The next couple if statements that we're going to write are going to be what happens when a specific curve is not negative one or it is present within this animation curve itself. So currently we have the scale X. So let's write that one first. Back in the parent button, let's go to the step event and underneath, we need to make sure that the scale X does not equal negative one. If the scale X does not equal negative one, then we can take our image X scale and we can say it is going to equal the original scale X plus the animation curve. And we want to use the channel evaluate. We are going to evaluate the curve channel, which is our variable for the X scale based off of whatever the curve value currently is, which is going to be going along that curve between the zero and one. So if I create a new object and I'm going to call this object button, play i'm going to assign my sprite and then go down to parent and make sure that we're setting the parent to our button parent itself you can see that all the events that we wrote before are automatically brought into this object now i can go into my room i can take my play button place it in and if i click on variables you can see that we have a variable definition found within our parent i can edit this and i can choose the animation curve example now, if I hit F5, the game should load up and hopefully we put everything right. When we hover over this, you can see that the X scale went through the curve and at the very end, it comes back to zero. So the only thing we really have to do is go back to the object parent and fill in the rest of the information. So we already have an X scale, so we will fill one in for a Y scale. And we also have the option to do X and Y together. So we can check for the channel scale. And once again, just make sure that we are using the original and then checking the valuation based off of the curve value and the actual channel, which we find in here. The final ones I wanna add inside the parent are going to be for the X and Y position of the actual button itself. So once again, we are checking that the channel X is within the animation curve. And if it is, we're using the original X position, and then we are applying the channel X to the original position, which will move it up and down. So with this little bit of code, if I maximize it here, we make sure that we can move. We move the value on the curve. If we've reached the end, then we don't want to move anymore. And depending on what it finds inside the animation curve, it will either use the X scale, Y scale, both of them, or the X and Y positions. So this means if I were to go back to my workspace, create a new animation curve, 
let's just call this CV something. We can have a scale value, which we'll use both X and Y. And we can also have a X value and a Y value. So in here, let's say I want the scale to go up a little bit and then come back down and then go back up. I wanna make sure that this is smooth. Now that I'm done with the scale, I can say my X position. I just want it to move very, very slightly. And I'm gonna increase the range to 10 and minus 10. And I'm going to hide all of them, but my X scale. And I'm gonna bring this up, bring that down, bring it up, and do the same with my Y scale. Except I will go in reverse. So now that we have all of our options here, I can go to my room, put in a new play button, click on variables, edit this guy, and say I want the curve of something. And I'm not sure how this is gonna look, but we're gonna run it anyway, so we still have that one there. And if I do this guy, you can see that we get a little bounce effect. So that's all we need to do to represent our button system. And now we can add a whole bunch of different animations based off of these animation curves. And you can plug and play this in any game or any menu that you have. I would like to say thank you for watching this video and a special thank you to my Patreon supporters in no particular order. Annie, Paul, Manuel, Jesus, Victor, Edward, GGB84, Ashby, and Kylie. Along with this video, I would like to give away Felix the Reaper. Type in the link found in the video to claim it. Once again, thank you for watching.